Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at Roll in One, a game in which you use different clubs represented by dice to try and get to the fairway before your friends. It's not as easy as it sounds though. You're gonna be rolling different dice. You can't choose to stop. You're gonna to have to keep rolling until you roll lower than the previous score you rolled. Other players are gonna be using their abilities and cards to mess up your shots, change direction, or make you stop in water or nudge you off your track as you all battle to make it to the end first. Now, I would say if you're a golf fan, this is more akin to something like crazy golf. There's a lot of very strange rules, stuff that doesn't really fit golf. It feels very much, I always compare it to a combination of Formula D and Munchkin. Munchkin because the amount of backstabbing and treachery and stuff there is. Because you would not believe how much there is in a golf game. And then on the other side, you've got the Formula D, you've got the different dice representing different powers. So there is a bit of strategy there as well. I do think I do think I actually prefer this game. I do prefer golf over F1 if I had to choose. I'd probably choose neither, honestly, but if I had to, I'd probably go golf. I prefer the backstabbing element in this. I know you can sort of slam into each other in Formula D. This one's a lot quicker. There's a lot more fun characters. It just feels, it feels more kid friendly. It feels more party game friendly. It just all round feels more welcoming of a game. Not that Formula D is difficult or one that you should avoid, it's a great game, but for me, I would go roll in one. So if you've played Formula D, that's probably some high praise for the game. I did really enjoy it, do really enjoy it. We've played it a ton of times, but let's take a look at how it works. Inside the box, you'll get a selection of tiles you can use to build your holes for each round. You'll get a selection of different colored balls, a selection of dice, some cards that you can play during your turn, the scoring card and a tiny little pencil and some hazard tokens and some character cards and the rules. Let's quickly go through the characters. So we've got Juana, Gus, Mina, pretty cool looking Hector. We've got Cal. They've all got different abilities. So we've got Rahul. So you can use these different times in different games. We've got Sandra and finally we've got Feng. So to start a game, they do have information on the back. So deal two of these out, one face up, one face down. You're going to shuffle these and deal them to the players. Each player is going to get one. But like I say, I would deal them a second character face down. So they've got references on the back. In this example, we're doing a three player game. And then we're going to roll the four sided dice to decide who goes first. In this example, Gus has rolled a four so he can start. Jumping forward ever so slightly, but let's talk about the actual tiles themselves. So here we've got sand, which basically means you ignore the first roll each turn. So if you roll a four, the number still counts. So you will need to roll higher than that four, but it is ignored. We've got trees, which basically just ignore triangles and can make it a little difficult as there are a ton of triangles on the dice. We've got the fairway. So if your ball lands here, it will slide an extra square, which could be good or bad, depending where it is. We've got water. If you again land here, finish your turn there, you're gonna get a penalty token, which will take your score up and make it difficult to win. And then the rough, which has no special rules. Then you're gonna shuffle up the caddy cards. And on the first turn, each player is gonna get three of those. These are gonna be cards that you can use to play on other players, depending if you decide to do that for your group. And you're gonna draw a new caddy card on subsequent holes. Now, they're going to be effects that say stuff like change who gets the final turn or skip turns to whoever's farthest just to give them an advantage if it's yourself. But if you're playing the rules that we play where you can play them on other people, it can get very backstabby, but it depends on how you like your games. Next, you're ready to set up the hole. So you're going to take this tile here, which is where you always start, and then you get to choose from two to four tiles and add them on in any way you see fit. Now, do remember, you are going to have to try and get through this. So you don't want to make it too difficult. You don't want the game to go on hours because there are some very tricky ways to set it up, but we're just going to do something relatively easy here. So we're going to be playing from the first tile we put down and then you choose where the hole is. So you can cover up stuff like water if you don't like want it on there or you can cover up different tiles. You can choose anywhere you want this to be and then we're going to get started. So let's go through a turn here. For example, we are the white ball here. We roll a three, which means we are going to be able to move up one. 
we roll a three again. So whenever you roll, your number needs to be higher than the previous one. So in this case, we haven't achieved that, meaning we end our turn here in the sand. Let's take the second player's turn now. This means they have to turn and then move forward. This does change their direction and is one of the few ways to do that. Then we roll a number so we keep going. Uh, we roll a higher number so we keep going. Would help if I rolled it on the screen, but I am rolling triangles at the minute, which always shuffles you along one. And then finally a three, lower than our last previous number, we finish here, just on the edge of the map, which is very good, because you can go out of bounds yourself. And then again, we'll do the third players, just so you have an idea of how it goes. You can choose from a plethora of different dice. These have different numbers, different symbols on, which we will go through shortly. And it's the first player to land on the hole. A few other things you might need to know. So like we've mentioned already, the sand does mean we're gonna ignore our first roll. Again, I will, I will reinforce if you roll a four, that still counts as a number. So on the next turn, you're gonna to have to roll higher than that. So sand is quite difficult to get out of. It can be very tricky. So you probably want to pick a dice with chip or some kind of high numbers to get you out of there. A few more things to note. If you land in the same hex as another player, you are going to push them forward. So if you are here and landed in their square, you can't push them out of bounds. So instead, you're going to pile on top of them in a stack. A few other noteworthy things. You can chain these reactions. So in this case, we would knock purple forward, purple would knock white forward and so on. And finally, one of the most painful things, you can knock other players into the water and they will still gain a hazard token. Remember, as well as dice, you're going to have your cards and your character's special ability to get you around some things that might be in your way. Maybe you need to turn midair. Maybe you need to ignore a penalty like Sandra does here. There is a few options and things other than just dice rolling that make this game really interesting. Now, the book does touch on this, but I'll go for it here in case you're just using this to get playing. A triangle means you get to go forward a hex unless you are in the trees, in which case it fails, meaning your turn ends. The arrow means you need to turn 60 degrees, either left or right, and then move forward in that direction, changing your direction for the shot, which can be quite painful in a lot of cases. Normally you're set up to go. Slightly different arrow here. Basically, you're going to move forward and then you're going to do the turn we mentioned before. Again, could be quite difficult. It could be something you need later on in the game just to get around those corners. And finally, we've got a chip shot. This is what you're gonna to use to get out of sand normally. Basically, you're gonna go as many pips as shown. So in this case, three, one, two, three, and land. This one can be good for maneuvering tight corners as you're gonna move a certain amount, one to four normally, and then land. So you're not gonna overshoot. You're not gonna go further than you need to. And it can be very good for putting as well. If you're unsure about any of the symbols during the game, you've got a quick handy reference guide here, which just tells you about how the numbers work. Triangles, the move as many spaces as the dots, the arrows, all of that stuff is on here, as well as what each dice can actually roll. Here on one of the final pages, we've got a few variant rules. There's a few for golfer cards where people share abilities or you can choose them. There's additions to the ricochet rule. There's handicap points. There's varieties like campaign mode, which we haven't actually tried yet, but I am excited to see how that will work, as well as bumper golf. So there's a few different ways to spice up games, especially when you've been playing for so long, which I do like that they've included. If at any point you are stuck and unsure how stuff works, they do have sample turns on the back. So it's gonna tell you the dice they've used. It's gonna tell you how they rolled and where they moved from those dice rolls. It does explain it quite well. There are a few things that look confusing. I did see online some people complaining about they weren't sure how you wouldn't move or you would only move one. Basically, it would depend on your rolls, but it doesn't explain it that well on the back. But all you need to remember is you need to roll higher than the previous number. So there are ways that you get stuck. It could be in sand. It could be other things. And it does turn into a very tactical game of dice rolling, card playing, character usage, and even some backstabbing, which I wouldn't expect in a golf game. But if you're a fan of stuff like Munchkin, Formula D, I would say it's a combination of those games. Me and my friends have loved playing this. I've only had it a little while and we've already had it on the table a handful of times. But that's enough of explaining how it works. Let's get back to the review. But that's rolling one. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you let me know in the comments if you've got any questions because there are some gray areas. Just drop them in the comments below. I will clear any of that up. I didn't want to throw it all in this video. I wanted this just to be a how-to. I didn't want to go into all the tiny little 
intricacies of the game, take a shot. But hopefully it's given you some idea if you're gonna enjoy it, how it works, and if it's one for your table. That's all I've got for this episode. So if you've made it to this point, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.